Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Terrence here with fishnetproductions.com. Got another quick video for you today. Today's uh, video is dealing again with compression. It's the second video in a series of videos that I'm doing on compression. Uh, the first video dealt with uh, the first category of compression, which is dynamic compression. And you can check out that video. I'll leave a link to it here in this video for you to check out if you want to start from the beginning. But today's video is going to be dealing with the second category of compression which is called effect compression or using compression to create an effect. Now in contrast to dynamic compression, effect compression is used to basically alter a sound in a way that's very perceivable. In dynamic compression you're not really altering the sound in a perceivable way, you're just simply taming uh, spikes and peaks of that sound so that it won't stick out in a mix. Now again effect compression is, is something again that's very very perceivable. So the effect we're going to be trying to create today in this track is a very, very common effect that a lot of people try to get out of uh, their drums and other instruments as well. And that effect is called punch. Now, I have a track here, and this is the same track we're using from uh, the first video. If uh, you haven't seen it, this track is a cover song that I'm doing for a client of mine. It's called Ain't Nobody. Uh, it's by Shaka Khan. The uh, track is, is very, very dynamic in terms of all the instruments and the vocals. But we're going to be trying to create this uh, punch on the snare drum today. So I'm going to play a little bit of this track for you to check out so you can hear what the drums are doing. Uh, just give the snare drum a listen. It has no effects on it right now. And just give it, listen to it dry so you can see what it's doing. I've been waiting for you. It's been so long. I knew just what I would do when I heard your song. Fill my heart with your bliss. You knew I could not resist. I needed someone. Okay, uh, so you see the snare drum is it's actually fine. There's nothing necessarily wrong with the snare drum. Um, as you can hear, and I'll, I'll solo it for you, or I'll just solo the, the entire drum track by itself so you can listen to that. Now check out the snare, see what it's doing in the mix here with the, just the drums by itself. Okay, so you see nothing really wrong with the snare drum. Um, it works with the kit. It, it sounds like it belongs in the kit. So technically, again, there's nothing wrong. And this is not an effect that you're trying to use to fix something. Again, it's just something that you're using to alter the sound. Now, what we're going to do is try to create some punch in this track. So I have a, a compressor here, and it's the SSL compressor, the same compressor, again, I was using from uh, video one for dynamic compression. This time I have the compressor set to 4 to 1 ratio, which is a very common ratio that you use on um, transient in instruments, such as, or transient heavy instruments such as drums and things like that. Uh, this time I have the analog button on, which I didn't have this on in the last video. This is giving some color from the actual um, SSL sound that uh, basically you buy this compressor for. Um, so right now I'm not getting any compression at all. It's at a the threshold is all the way up, no makeup gain at all. Uh, we're going to dial this in to try to get some punch. And what I'm going to try to do is make this compressor uh, time with the beats of the snare. So it'll hit and then it'll go back down all the way to zero by the time the next hit happens. And then it goes up so that you get this kind of pumping punch effect uh, with the music. So let me play the whole track again and let me just dial that in. Here we go. I've been waiting for you. So long, I knew just what I would do when I heard your song. Fill my heart with your bliss, give me freedom. You knew I could not resist, I needed someone. And now I'm flying through the stars. I hope this night will last forever. Huh. Okay, now I have the threshold uh, basically all the way down right now. Um, basically, what you want to shoot for to get some punch is around 8 to 10 dB of compression. Um, right now, the release time, I'm going to play with that in a second. But you basically want to shoot for about 8 to 10 dB of, of compression uh, to get that punch sound. Now, I'm going to time this release time so where it's 
uh, a little bit more in time with the music right now. It's going pretty fast back to zero, so I'm going to slow it down a little bit. So let me see. Let me dial that in. I've been waiting for you. It's been so long. I knew just what I would do when I heard your song. Fill my heart with your bliss. Give me freedom. You knew I could not resist. Okay, that's about right. So you see how, again, watch watch the meter here, how it goes up to about eight or nine, and then it goes back down to zero uh, before the next snare hit, and then it compresses again and goes back down. So it's, it's really pumping in time with the music. It gets right to zero, like right at the time when the next snare hit is going to hit. So again, check out the meter here. I've been waiting for you. It's been so long. Okay, now let's solo the snare drum so we can hear what that's doing uh, a little bit more cleanly with the snare drum. So I'm a, I'm a, a and B, and I'm just going to solo the snare drum by itself, uh, so you hear it, and then I'll I'll play a couple of measures of it, and then I'll turn it on. Okay, so that dropped in volume a little bit. I want to keep the volume the same, so I'm going to give it a little bit of makeup gain. Uh, I guess maybe around 4 dB. Let's see if that works. Um, okay, let me turn it off again and start it. Yeah, that's pretty close. Okay, now listen to basically what I call the back end of the snare drum. So you're getting that tone where it, it kind of, after you hear the initial uh, transient attack of the drum, that back end of the drum that usually fades out, it's kind of more present now in that whole sound versus when, I, when the compressor is off. So basically the compressor is kind of, in a sense, turning up that back end. So I'll A and B it again, check it out. All right, so you can see how it, it alters the sound. It kind of tightens that, that snare drum up a little bit, uh, gives it kind of a tighter sound versus a, 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 a wider uh, kind of thing. It, it's like a, a hit, and it's right there, and it's in your face. Now, what this allows you to do, again, so I'm, I'm going to play this in a mix so you can hear what it sounds like. But what this allows you to do is turn up the snare drum, uh, turn up the volume of the snare drum, so it puts that snare drum hit like right in your face, uh, and it's pretty much the same every time it hits. There's no uh, peaks and transients and all that because you're basically squashing all of that to death with this much compression. So let's hear what it's doing in the mix. I'll turn it off and then I'll turn it on. I've been waiting for you. It's been so long. I knew just what I would do when I heard your song. Fill my heart with your bliss. Give me freedom. I could not resist, I needed someone, and now I'm flying through the stars, I hope this night will last forever, oh, 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 oh. Okay, so you see how that kind of gave that drum just like some punch, it's kind of like, uh, I've, my imagination says that they came up with the word punch because it, it's really like a punch in your face, it puts you right there, gives you that depth of a, of a punch, so... It puts it right there in your face. It's not really, again, doing too much to change the volume necessarily, but it's altering the sound. It's a completely different sounding snare drum than it, what it previously was. So I'll solo it again so you can hear it, uh, the difference between, listen to the difference between the two sounds of when I turn the compressor on. So this is the first sound. Next. Okay, so you see how it, it creates almost kind of like there's this pop that's kind of like a straight hit to the face, and that's that's basically what we call punch. Um, now, again, this effect can be used on multiple instruments. You can get punch out of a bass. 
um, out of out of a kick drum. Usually, it's used for um, lower instruments and that have lower uh, frequency information, and like kick drums and things like that. But you can still put it on a vocal. Uh, it works on vocals just as well. It you can it will alter the com completely alter the sound of a vocal instrument uh, or anything like that, and it can be used in multiple ways. But that's b the basis of effect compression. Again, it's a type of compression that will alter your sound. Uh, that'll, you know, again, give you a different sound than what you had in the first place. So my advice is if you have some, you know, some dry drums or anything like that, that's, you know, not hitting as hard. If you got something that's, you know, a really gritty mix that you need that snare drum and that kick drum to kind of just punch real hard and, you know, needs, needs that groove to it. This punch compression is, is, is a really, really good start for that. Also, you can kind of play with the attack times on here if you want to play with, how those transients sound in the mix you can kind of play with this attack time i prefer to leave my transients in the mix so that's why i have my attack time all the way slow here so it doesn't hit that initial part of the snare drum i like to have it hitting that back end of the snare drum because that's it gives me more punch like that or at least that's my preference so again the guys that's the basics of effect compression i hope you got something out of this video and i hope you're learning a little bit more about compression from this series that i'm doing on compression now join me in the next video I'm going to be doing or in answering the question about when to compress and why to compress and it goes it's a basically an end to this series and it's a great follow up and you'll learn when you should compress when you should not compress or if you know compressors are good at all in in any context so stay tuned for that video make sure you go subscribe to the channel drop a comment on the video let me know what you thought about it and we can converse there till the next time guys see you in the next video